Good evening, Large Wine and Romerinic. It's Thursday, January 21st, and I'm Kat Galliano. And I'm Rebecca Paganini. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode of The Local Live. First, the Mamaroneck School Board meeting covers plans for the future of co-op camp. From tragedy to inspiration, find out how a local resident's loved ones are trying to honor his legacy. LNC TV celebrates the new year at Homics Ice Rink. Do you want to know what's been trending online this week? Keep watching for our segment in the media. And you don't want to miss our LMC TV Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Want to know the latest on the Mamaroneck Avenue parking situation? Stay tuned and be a part of our roundtable discussion. Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live. At the January 19th Mamaroneck School Board meeting, a highlight on the agenda was the future of Co-op Camp, a program that has existed in the district since 1968. This program is funded by the Mamaroneck School District and offers educational as well as recreational activities during the summer. Co-op Camp is not free. Parents pay according to their economic status. 75% of these students that benefit from these camps are from low-income families. Co-op camp costs the district $160,000. At this time, the board does not know if the cost of the camp fits in their annual budget. Superintendent Dr. Robert Schaps is looking for options to keep the camp alive. One of those options is reconstructing the camp as an enri enrichment program. Here's how our community reacted. I think it would be a terrible loss not to have it. And I honestly believe in reading and writing, but I think what you can get in the summer, the additions to it, as you were saying, are terribly important. I agree with the district that the summer school experience should not be a, a quote-unquote camp. It is not the district's job to, to provide enhanced babysitting. It should transition to be a continuation of educational services within a camp-like setting. I really hope that we can continue this, because I know this would, this would make a lot of other kids happy. And, and enjoy um, learning. Remember that you have access to the entire meeting online at lmctv.org. Just look for the video tab and search for school board meetings. Brandon Wesley, a Mamaroneck High School graduate, passed away this week, inspiring his loved ones to take action in honoring his memory. Brandon loved basketball and could be found rain or shine on the courts of his beloved Columbus Park. A petition on change.org was started to rename Columbus Park Brandon Wesley Memorial Park. The petition has already rallied more than 830 supporters. On the behalf of the local live, we'd like to extend our condolences to the, fam to the family and friends of Brandon Wesley. Donations are being accepted at GoFundMe.com. Last Friday, L LMC TV celebrated its annual New Year's party. The festivities took place at the Homics Ice Rink where many public officials, community members, and volunteers gathered for the fun night. With a photo booth, delicious food, and ice skating, there was something for everyone to enjoy. This year's celebration was extra special because the local live celebrated its 100th episode the night before. This award-winning program tied for second place in the Alliance for Community Media Northeast Region Video Festival for the best news and magazine show. We want to thank everyone who shared this special moment with us. Now telling us what stories are trending in the media this week, here's Rob Baez. You know those clothing mints that you sometimes see on the sidewalks? While it is used for a noble cause, you must be careful. Because according to the Mamaroneck patch, these clothing bins are illegally placed and are used by fake charities to make profit. That problem will no longer be an issue in Larchmont, Mamaroneck, or New York State, as New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a legislation bill that will prohibit collection bins on public property. Now this is a warning to all Larchmont and Mamaroneck residents. It is predicted that a large-scale blizzard nicknamed Winter Storm Jonas will be hitting Lower Westchester County as well as a majority of the East Coast. So make sure to stock up on rock salt and get some shovels while you're at it. This story can also be found on an Americanic patch. And of course, you can go to the Weather Channel's website, weather.com, for updates. Last Thursday at around 10 p.m., many Americanic residents were left in the dark as people between Old White Plains Road and Grand Street lost power. According to reports, something in a transformer burned out, causing wires to come down. While there was no explosion, 
Luckily, power was restored the following day. This story is from Loha Journal News. Also on Thursday, the Mamaroneck High School robotics team competed at the first tech challenge at John F. Kennedy High School in Summers, New York. The Mamaroneck robotics team advanced to the semifinals and finished fourth overall at the Mid-Hudson Valley Qualifying Tournament. To read more, go to themamaronekpatch.com. Archie Comics, formerly headquartered in Mamaroneck, New York, has just released a comic, See Something, Say Something, is an eight-page comic book that focuses on the issue of gun violence in school. This was published as a result of the church shooting in South Carolina last year. To read more, go to the Graphic Justice website. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you all for listening. I am Robert Baez, signing off. Now it's time for local trivia. Keep watching because after that we discuss parking on the Maranick Avenue. Stay tuned and join our conversation. Quarter meter, single space smart meter, multi-space, pay by plate, do you think you could identify all of these machines? How do you think you should pay for parking? And which of these will find their way to Mamaroneck Avenue? Tonight, we want to bring you up to speed on the village's attempts to solve the issue. Joining us, the chair of the Parking Ad Hoc Committee, Maria DeRose, will talk about the committee's efforts, its recommendations, and where things stand now. With me is Jeff Megan, a lifelong resident of this community, uh, president of the LMC TV board, and he's going to be monitoring your questions and comments throughout the night. That's you, Jeff. <laughs> and I'm substituting for Mike Witch, yes, who has a hip operation, and we wish him well. Absolutely. And he's recovering, and uh, we'll see him shortly. Uh, and as always, we want to hear from you out there. You can join the conversation by phone, email, or tweet. The contact information is on the bottom of your screen. Maria, thank you for joining us. Can you give us an overview of parking in the village of Mamaroneck and why so many residents and non-residents might be confused? The Currently, the village has all single-space meters on the avenue and in the parking lots. And those are the coin? Those are the coin-operated. Okay. You put your quarter in, you get your 20 minutes, and you go from there. Um, there is a time limit for parking on Maranick Avenue, which are, um, you know, meter maids in force. It's difficult to do that. They used to chalk the tires, but now that's become antiquated. So, you know, they, they do enforce that. Um, the village board had moved to replace those single space meters with multi-space meters, um, you know, taking in various accounts. Um, and they purchased the multi-space meters. Uh, a committee was formed to, you know, review what should be done with these multi-space meters that were ordered uh, pay by plate, which... Pay by plate. Pay well, by plate. Well, now, what does pay by plate yeah. mean? Pay by plate is when you walk up to the parking meter you would need to enter your license plate number into the meter as opposed to a space number or in addition to a space number. And do you know how it was decided to go by plate, you know, license plate? And I'll say that yeah. I don't never remember the license <laughs> yeah. plates in my car. And I said, <laughs> yes, neither I do either. I. <laughs> um, that was a recommendation made by the Walker Group. They, and they did the study. A study of parking, you know, in the central business di district of Mamaroneck. And they made that recommendation to the board to do multi-space meters pay okay. by plate in order to promote turnover of parking spaces in the central business district. So everyone gets their turn to park on Mamaroneck exactly. Avenue. Exactly. Parking on Mamaroneck Avenue is, you know, prime real estate. It's coveted spots. Everybody wants to park in front of the store that they're going into. So in order to promote turnover and stop people from parking there all day long, you know, that's what the recommendation of Walker was. So that's why these meters were ordered. Um, when it became public knowledge, the meters were ordered, and they were ordered pay by plate. There was a huge, huge backlash um, from merchants, shoppers, people who live in the village. Everybody just did not like the idea. And was the objection the to the multi-space or to the plates? It was a combination of both. Most people really objected to the license plate readers, and a lot of people just didn't like the idea in general of multi-space meters. So, so what happened after that? So the board formed this ad hoc committee to, you know, 
see what we could do to come up with a solution. So this is the ad hoc parking committee. The ad hoc you were the chair. Committee, yes. Okay. So we've been meeting to try and work out a solution that would, you know, try trying our best to make everybody happy. Uh, viewing different options for the use of the currently purchased multi-space meters, and you know, also viewing options for single space meters to see which would be, you know, better fit with our community and. And were you, know, you charged like with a specific task? We were charged with the task, we actually we were charged with the task of trying to get these meters out of storage. They were bought and they had been sitting in storage for a very long time. Um, okay. So and that I, was our main thing was to try and get those, you know, come up with a recommendation for those as quickly as possible. And that was done? And you, that was done. Okay, so you came up with a recommendation for those multi-space meters that have been in storage. Correct. What was that? Our recommendation was to put them in the parking lots, um, the cross street from the police station, behind CBS, um, behind Payless, you know, any place that there is a, a parking lot. So these are the parking lots that are adjacent to or near right. Mamaronic Avenue. Avenue. Near Mamaronic, Mamaronic. Mamaronic. Okay. not on Mamaronic Avenue proper. <clears throat> Um, we and, were, and that was your recommendation and that was adopted? That was a partial recommendation and that was adopted by the board. Um, the committee felt that you know the best place for these types of meters is in parking lots because... Okay. Can I ask you how many yeah. people are on the committee and, and just sure. general makeup? There's 11 members on the committee, mm -hmm. um, nine male, two female. Uh, I'm at other <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I thinking, don't Tony, I'm thinking jury selection. <laughs> right. I'm going to use my peremptory challenge. Here. Um, I mean, they're all just local citizens. They're all right. Everyone volunteered for this. Everyone's, mm -hmm. you know, submitted their their recommendation and their request to volunteer, and they were chosen by the board. I believe there was 26 applicants who applied, and 11 of us were chosen. For the and meeting. how did you get chosen as chairman? I oh well, we at our first meeting we. Sat down and you know we all said okay. First thing we need to Jerry do is Foreman. is cho right? <laughs> <laughs> is choose a chair and someone nominated me and there were no other nominations. So I guess I either got lucky or drew the short short straw depending on how you look at it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so well, let's just go back to these multi-space meters for a moment. So yes. they've been popping up in various places yes. lately. Yes. In the lots that you mentioned. Yes. But they're still covered. They're still covered. They are. When the, when the multi-space meters were ordered, they were ordered on the recommendation of Walker, so they were ordered pay by plate. The committee's recommendation was pay by space. It's just, it's simpler, it's easier, it's less invasive than pay by plate. So now the, pro, the meters themselves need to be reprogrammed. Okay. So, and that's going to take a few and months. And that's going to take a little while. I don't okay. think it should take Mo a few months. Hopefully okay. by, you know, February, mid-February to end of February, they should be reprogrammed. The problem is that we needed to get them out before the snow comes, Got before it. the ground freezes, so, because then you can't put them into the concrete. Okay, so that's why you're seeing them pop up, mm -hmm. although they're being they're also popping up in other places. I yes. think there's mm -hmm. one at the Emlyn, underneath the Emlyn, yes. and there's one on Mamaronic Avenue. Yes. Okay, there's two on Mamaronic. There's two on Mamaronic okay. Avenue, and there's four in the lot behind. The movie theater. Okay. Yes. I'm going to stop this part because we actually have a caller and we don't like to keep them waiting. Okay. okay good. Are you, are you there, caller? No. I guess we have. I'm being told we have it on email. Um, well, I do have a couple of emails. Um, um, a little off the subject, but uh, one of the problems Peter says is one of the main problems on Romantic Avenue is employees of merchants who are parking on the avenue. Uh, which has always been a problem, and how do you prevent that? Well, the multi-space meter with the license plate reader would have prevented that nicely because you would have been allowed to park X amount of hours on the avenue, and then you couldn't park there again. The problem is not only would it have prevented the workers from parking there, it would have prevented everyone else from parking there for you know as much time as they needed to be there. There are single-space smart meters out there that will work like a multi-space meter in that effect. They come with sensors, so if they could be programmed to allow for just say three hour parking on Mamaronic Avenue. So once you go in, you can only park for a maximum of three hours in that parking space. Then you would have to physically move your car from that parking space to another parking space mm -hmm. and then start all over again so the meter would reset. Um, that may deter 
you know, merchants from parking on the avenue because I don't think people could be running in and out of their stores every, mm -hmm. you know, hour, I two I also hours, see the problem hours. getting better. This is an age-old problem. Mm -hmm. And I only see a couple of uh, violators. But you see a lot of the employees parking several blocks away. Yes. Um, from the stores, which I think is very good. Yeah. And the village has made it desirable for employees to park in the lots adjacent to Mamaronic Avenue. They do offer d deep discounts, which they will continue to keep in place, um, you know, to encourage people who are going to be on the avenue all day long to park in one of those lots. I just want to get back to the multi-space meters uh, that are yes. popping up, just because I, <laughs> to we've been hearing, hearing anecdotes, and I think even the village manager um, said that people are, th these meters are covered right now because yes. they're not in use, Yes. but people are lifting the covers, not just to peek, but putting in coins that they then can't get back. So we're not supposed to use the meters, right? No, 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 right. no. The, the meters, okay. as I said, the meters were put in because, you know, we are in winter. So we had to get them in before the ground, you know, froze, froze and we couldn't drill them in. They're not operational yet because they need to be reprogrammed. So no one should use so the multi-space no meter. No, no. My suggestion would be if you see a multi-space meter okay. that is uncovered, please call the village manager's office and report it. Don't use it. Don't put your money in it. Um, just call the village manager's office and let them know that the meter is uncovered so they could go and they could fix it because, you know, natural curiosity people take the bags off, they want to see what's under there, they don't replace them or they get blown away or anything like that. Okay, so th those meters are going into lots and, and everyone yes. agreed on that? Yes, parking okay. lots are, are where they belong. You, you, If you park in a parking lot, you expect to walk to your destination anyway, so it's perfect. You're going to park, you're going to walk, and as you walk to your destination, you're going to be have the meter right in front of you, you pay, and you could go you know, to wherever you need to go. But now we have Mamaronic Avenue. Yes. <laughs> and how should the parking be there? And I know that your committee looked into that. We're, we're did still a survey, exploring that. We did do a survey. survey. Um, it was, we call it a survey. It was probably more of an opinion poll. Um, it was basically straightforward, yes or no questions. Um, we just asked questions such as, you know, why are you on Mamaronic Avenue and what time are you there? You know, do you work on Mamaronic Avenue? Do you live on Mamaronic Avenue? Do you just come here to shop? Do you come here to dine? Do you come to visit a professional office? What times of day and what days of the week do you come to Mamaronic Avenue? And one of the questions was, um, you know, what would you prefer for your parking experience? Would you prefer a single space smart meter, a multi space meter, or no change? There was close to 500 surveys that we received back and the overwhelming majority indicated either single space meters or no change, which... Which is the coin operated. Which is the coin operated single space meter that we have now. Let me ask you something, who, um, who formulated the survey and was it run by the board or did the board write the survey for you? No, the committee, the committee formed a subcommittee specifically for the survey. Uh, one of our committee members did quite a bit of research on you know, how to conduct surveys and she came up with the survey platform. Uh, then it was distributed to all the members of the committee for their input. So we tweaked some of the questions. You know, we took out and replaced some of the questions. We didn't want to make it too long, so we shortened right. it. And, you know, when we agreed on a final version, we just went and distributed. I myself was one of the people who distributed the paper copies to the merchants along the avenue. But the survey was also on the Village website. Yes, it was on the Village website, and it was publicized on the Village website. Um, you know, yeah. this way it could be done online through SurveyMonkey or it could be done in paper form by visiting one of the 26 merchants on the avenue that had them. And you and John Ferris went up and down the yes, avenue. Yes, we did. And John and I went up and down the Avenue. Gave a couple of Saturdays for that. Yes, one Saturday to distribute them and another Saturday to pick them up. And it was, it was a great experience for both of us because we, you know, we walked into 26 different you know, shops on the avenue. Some people we knew well there, some people we had just met for the first time. And... Each and every one of them, you know, took the time to sit and talk with us and, you know, tell us what they wanted for themselves, for their customers. And this is something they cared about. It's something that they cared deeply about. And the overwhelming, we, like I said, we went to 26 stores, 25 out of 26 people said, please don't put multi-space meters on the avenue. One of the shop owners that we spoke with said he could care less either way. But all 26 were in agreement that they all said, please, whatever you do, just make it easy as possible for people to come into the village, park, and patronize our stores. So is that the decision? What's, what's happening now? I mean, I gather that 
You presented this to we the presented board. This. We did. We, we present. We talked about this with the committee. We didn't present this uh, piece to the board. It hasn't gone past the committee yet for a recommendation. Right now, what we're waiting for is to find out cost of you know one technology versus another. We have the multi space meters, so we know what they cost. We need to figure out and how much is that. I believe the village spent a total of a hundred and. 18 or it was like That's about $180,000. So it came out to about $6,550 per multi space meter. Okay. Um, if you divide it, you know, single space meters, obviously, the total cost is going to be more because you're talking about outfitting 240, 240. parking spaces. Right. So your initial cost would be more. But, you know, it's. It's a hard decision, you know, it's cost versus what people want and trying to balance it and make everybody happy and, or at least, you know, as many people as you can make happy, happy. Now, there's been some discussion about a pilot program. Yes. What is that about? That is something that the Board of Trustees, or the majority of the Board of, board of Trustees actually um, voted on and they are coordinating that with the village manager's office. Um, we had had a company come in over the summer to demonstrate their single space meters, just to show you know, us what it was all about. And at that time, the company had said, you know, listen, anytime you guys want, we'll feel free to loan you a few meters. They take did them out. say that. They did. Take them out for a test spin, see what you think of them, whatever. So that suggestion was like thrown out there during a committee meeting, just as you know, a suggestion. You know, maybe we could get the company that we have and this other company that came in and made a presentation Maybe we could get a few of their meters and see, you know, single space meters, see what they're all about. And from that simple anecdote that the committee really hadn't even had time to discuss in full, it got blown up to this full-fledged pilot program. So the committee really is not um, So this was an action that? that the Board of Trustees this took? This was an action that the Board of Trustees took and now is being coordinated through the village manager's office. Okay, so what... I know that there is a parking meeting scheduled for tonight. What is the parking committee's role at this point? The parking committee's role is to, I guess, disseminate the information that is going to be coming from this pilot program. We also were tasked to look into um, the hours of parking, maybe, you know, increasing those hours from 6 p.m., you know, up to, to, 8 to 8 p.m., 9 p.m. And also, you know, once we have all the numbers and decide, the village decides what they're going to do and what kind of technology, you know, talk about should the fees for parking remain the same, should they be increased, um, you know, maybe making better incentives to, you know, merchants and people who want to park on the avenue long term to get them into the parking lots and off of Marinick Avenue, but things like that. As of yet, my understanding, I sh actually, I think um, Richard Slinger and the village manager yes. spoke to, to the local live and said that there's no final determination even on the or starting date for the pilot program yet, right? They're still trying to figure out the logistics? Correct. That's because the, as I said, the, you know, the pilot, the meters are in, but they need to be reprogrammed. So no, 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 the pilot just, program for the single space meters. For the single space meters, we're waiting on, on those to you know, to come in. Um, you know, you're dealing with two different companies, it's time frame of who could right. get what, right. where. So the village manager's office is also coordinating all of that. They're trying to get them in as quickly as possible. So, so that we can try, we can try. Start it, exactly. Did you have a question that had come in? Um, well, a lot of this has to do with, we have uh, people who said that you, your committee made a recommendation, but the board didn't follow it, and um, that this was based only on uh, a split amongst your six people at that time and can you go into that a little sure, bit? Sure, absolutely. As I said, the parking committee didn't make any type of recommendation for testing. Um, that came strictly from the majority of the Board of Trustees. The reason that you see two multi-space meters already on the Marinick Avenue covered is because the, I don't know if it was the trustees or the village manager's office who decided to put those there to work in conjunction with the meters that are already in the parking lots. 
It's a convenience this feature. This is in front of Red Plum and CVS. In front of CVS. Red Plum and CVS, yeah. I know, I was surprised when I drove up there on Christmas <laughs> Eve and I saw them myself. I said, wait a minute. I, I'm, I don't understand. Does that mean so that you can pay for the parking lot from Amaranic Avenue? Exactly. Okay. So it, it's just, it's a convenience feature. Okay. And you know what, it's, it's really not a bad idea. I mean, if you park behind CVS and you walk wanna down. Want to add more time? Right. If you walk down to Smokehouse and you want to sit and have a burger and then you realize, oh, you know, I really should go here and I should go there. You know, you could just walk across the street to CVS and, okay. you know, without having to walk back to your, you know, to your car, walk back to the parking lot to pay. Okay. Um, has there been discussion about how one ultimately will pay for these machines? I mean, some people carry around rolls of quarters, others have bills, debit cards, credit cards, specific cards not <laughs> taken. It, is that part of the discussion? Right now, the meters that we have, the multi-space meters we have, were ordered that you could pay with quarters or you could pay with credit card. Those are your only two options. So the only difference so between... So no debit cards? I believe it would be a credit debit card. Okay. I'm sure you could use a debit card. Um, the only difference between that and the single space meters we have now is the credit card debit card option. Otherwise, it only takes quarters. Single space meters, um, you know, they could be ordered any way you want. Actually, the multi-space meters could have been ordered any way you want to. They could have been ordered to take paper money, you know, and different coin denominations. But for whatever reason, they were ordered the way they were ordered. So that's There's another your email question, which uh, which meters would be uh, best for ensuring parking for Emlyn and library events? And this is sort of sort of your committee's problem, but sort of not your problem. Because whenever the library and the Emlyn do run events, there's a sort of a shortage of parking up there. Well, when the Emlyn and the library do run events, they're probably long. I know I've been to the Emlyn to see quite a few shows, and they're usually more than an hour, more than an hour and a half. So you would want either technology would work as far as long-term parking, so it really wouldn't make any difference. It's just a matter of convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and how they're programmed, and either can either technology can be programmed, however you want it. Okay. Did you have another one there, my um, Jeff? I well, just called well you Mike. do you have any idea of the cost? Uh, one of the emails is saying, uh, you know, who authorized the cost? How much do those multi-space meters cost? And how much of the smart uh, single space? As far <laughs> as I know, I just you know from the, the numbers that the village manager gave you, figuring it out. It came out to about 6550 per multi-space meter. The quotes that we've gotten so far for single-space meters um, were anywhere between 250 to $400 per meter. So that, you know, How many of the multi-space meters do we have at 6500 apiece? We own 18 of them. 18. Okay. And I, I don't know how many were actually put out now in the parking lots and for the pilot program. I don't know if we've used all 18, if, if the My guess board. is about nine or 10 from my little drive around today. Yeah, I, th I, th I thought I counted 12, but it, you know, it could be. So we may right. still have a few of them left if you know, we need to put them in other places, mm -hmm. but I would assume that we would have to order more. Are you scheduled to have more meetings and, yes. and continue then follow the, yes, uh, absolutely. the meter story? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, can I ask why? Uh, there's a controversy supposedly over what happened at the meter at the meeting or over the record of the, the uh, December 21 uh, board oh, meeting. Oh, the December 21st board meeting. <laughs> um, and in fact, I, I just we should mention that in the most recent issue of the Mamaroneck Review, there's actually a letter to the editor from one of the trustees talking about it and setting the record straight from his vantage point about that the. Uh, he says that the Board of Trustees approved the installation of multi-space meters for certain parking lots off Mamaroneck Avenue, like we discussed, Yes. and a pilot installation of both multi-space and single-space meters on Mamaroneck Avenue. I'm just wondering why it was, he felt why it was necessary for clarification. Was did some is there some confusion? The clar when the resolution was presented to the board, the resolution included the pilot program. So I was actually at that meeting, and I went up to the podium and I said, please, you know, understand that we did not recommend this pilot program. This did not come from the committee. I know the committee is exploring other avenues, but we did not make that recommendation. 
and um, they acknowledged that, so it was changed. The recommendation, partial recommendation, actually, that we made was implemented by the board, and it was noted that the pilot program was something that was discussed amongst the Board of Trustees and voted on by the majority of the Board of Trustees. And it wasn't something that... It wasn't something that came from the committee. Okay. Um, curious if you know, and I don't know if you know, what's the annual net revenue from, from parking in the village? I don't know that. That I don't that would I'm sure the village manager could answer that off the top of his head. But you know, <laughs> honestly I have no idea. It seems that every time you ask a question when it comes to money, you get a couple different answers. So I don't like to okay. even assume because I don't know. I mean, I should say um, that Mr. Sillingerloon was kind enough to give us some numbers that we will share, which is that the cost of that Walker study on parking was $38,395. The cost of the 18 multi-space meters that are now going to be put into the parking lots uh, were, was $117,900. Um, they will need 240 uh, single space, uh, there are currently 240 single space coin meters. Um, so th those, he did give us those kinds of numbers and they're hoping to, I guess, pilot test 10 of each. You have a question there. Well, this is a suggestion. Uh, okay. This came into to us uh, from a citizen and it says that um, if you want to ease the parking on Maranek Avenue and have people go back to the Phillips Park Road parking lot, that you ought to make the Height House walkway more attractive. And, uh, and the Height House family was a very famous local family, and right. Leon, Leo Height House gave this, the money to have this walkway built, which was a very smart idea. But it is, looks run down, and uh, maybe that's something the committee can say to right. the and uh, there, board. You know, there's also signage. On I the think there even study. have been, yeah. been some arts proposals to... Um, well, there periodically there's nicer. some murals painted yes. on the side, but it's getting to be a little run down. Right. And, you know, signage is also a big thing. You know, the Ways and Means Committee is looking into that. You know, you come into the village, you don't know where to park or how long you could park there. Um, you know, most people don't know. I mean, living here all my life and you know, going on Maranek Avenue, I know that it is less expensive to park in the lots off of Maranek Avenue. You know, parking on Maranek Avenue currently is more expensive than those lots, right. but, you know, the average person doesn't know that. So, you know, signs need to be put up, you know, long-term parking here, and these are the rates, you know, signs on Maranek Avenue for, you know, how long I you can park I hope we can pay rates. by credit card because <laughs> everybody in the village is getting tired of trying to save quarters, and well, the merchants are... <laughs> are sick of giving quarters out to people who need money for the parking meters. Right. I'm going to make this the last mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been consideration about making the parking free? People have suggested that. Um, we used to have free parking many, many years ago, and then they decided Larchmont to, does. to do it. Larchmont does, but Larchmont also doesn't have the amount of people fading over parking spaces as we do. No insults <laughs> to large <laughs> but, you know, yes. the, you know, if you look at it from the other side, we have a good problem. We have so many people yes, that want to come here and patronize our, our we stores. We have almost 100% occupancy of stores. Exactly. Too. The, you know, there's just not enough prime mm. places to put them. So uh, well, we don't, you know, a lot of municipalities do that as an incentive to draw people in. Okay. Well, I want to thank you. We want to thank you, yes. uh, Maria DeRose, for joining us and for answering the questions. And, of course, it's always a pl my pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Mike, Maura. We do wish thank you, you well. Thank you, Maria. And coming up, more community stories and the answer to the trivia question. This week in sports, Mamaronek hosted their 19th annual boys basketball tournament. In the Tigers' first round game against Rhinex, senior Miles Houghton came up with a steal and then stole the show in the LMC Varsity Sports Play of the Week.
The Tigers would go on to defeat Rye in the championship game in double overtime to win their first Tiger tournament since 2012. Way to go, Tigers. You're watching The Local Live. The only news show on Larchmont and Mamaroneck on LMC TV. This week's pet of the week is Angel, a very pretty girl who loves to run and play. She loves everybody and is very friendly. She's a little shy in new situations, but warms up very quickly. She also, she's also good with cats. She smiles like a human and is just plain adorable. She would do better in a home with older children or adults, but could outgrow this with age and training. Remember, if you'd like to keep us on the air, support us by checking out the website, our website at www.lmctv.org. We really appreciate any contribution. We are always welcoming new interns and volunteers, so send your emails to the local live at lmctv.org and join us. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Local Live. I'm Kat Galliano. And I'm Rebecca Paganini. We'll see you next week. We'll see you Bye. next week. Bye. Get my pet ostrich the power of human speech. What? No.